I don't know how I managed to outdo myself on this one, but if you thought the other modules you, you were watching were good, where do you listen to this guy? Um, if your business is not already growing as a result of watching these previous tutorials, do what this next guy is going to say, and your business will skyrocket. You're going to see leads uh, you know, just fall out of the sky. Um, I'm so privileged to have this next guy. I mean, I'm not trying to make false claims or you know, do anything like that, but um, you, if this next golden nugget module that you're going to watch is really, I think, where it's at in this day and age. I've got an expert on in mobile marketing. His name is Tim Hayden, and uh, I'm forever indebted to this gentleman for coming on here because it's really no-brainer, folks, nowadays. Your average person has some type of mobile device, you know, whether it's a Samsung Galaxy or, or an iPhone or an iPad or what have you, and you know, if you're a real estate agent and you're trying to find someone who's looking to buy or sell a house or if you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner and you're looking for customers and clients, you got to get in front of those eyeballs on a mobile device. Um, it's just a no-brainer. I don't really have any statistics or data to back me up. Tim probably does. Um, but to, act, to implement these strategies you're about to hear, I think is going to give you uh, a, a monstrous competitive advantage over other real estate agents. Uh, other small business owners, people, your competitors, um, you know, because I mean, this is this is top shelf stuff, and you know, you, you got to really kind of get in the know and uh, take it from an expert and someone who really has their finger on the pulse of this technology and can give it to you um, in, in, a, in a really smooth format such as this one. Um, I'm going to stop rambling now and uh, roll out roll out the red carpet officially for Tim Hayden. How are you, sir? How are you, sir? Thank you for coming on here today. Doing fantastic, Chris. Thanks for having me. Oh my God, uh, I'm, the pleasure is really all mine. Uh, not to belabor the point, but you can clearly see that I'm like a kid in the candy store right now. So uh, we won't waste any more time here, Tim. We could just we could just dive right into it. And uh, how'd you how'd you become an expert in mobile marketing? Uh, t tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, sure, and I don't think uh, first thing I get is get you to stop using the word expert because there's really no such thing. Um, we're at a point right now in uh, the history of innovation, the history of of humanity, where the rate of innovation, the rate of technological advancement, is happening so fast that anybody who does says they're an expert, they're absolutely lying to you. Um, there are those of us who have been looking at this for a long time. I happen to be one of them, and how I got there really was um, I, I have a background as an interactive marketer, as a digital marketer, and then I parlayed that into an agency that I started that was specifically around experiential marketing, events. Uh, some things that would happen in stores, some of them would happen around music, trade shows, sporting events. And it was that time around, I would say, 2007, to get right to that, that, that point of enlightenment, was around 2007, uh, that agency, the name of it was Game Plan, my business partner Keith and I had noticed uh, through what we were doing for Dell, they had sponsored Justin Timberlake's Future Sex Love Sounds Tour, and while we were in an arena, we look around and to 14,000 screaming teenage girls, all of them have one thing in common, and that's a phone. And this was way back in 2007. And I think from that point on, it was really not so much uh, so much what was happening technologically, but what people were doing with those devices. Um, so, uh, you know, throughout our conversation today, I hope that I can impart to everyone who's going to watch this that it is more about human behavior changing than it is the latest and greatest technology, although so much of that which is happening in innovation is enabling humans to do something different than they ever have before. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm, I, I've, you've only spoken for a few minutes here, and I'm already blown away. But uh, I, 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 love, I love you experts that come on here. Sorry that I used that word, but um, I love it because you, you guys, you, you're all so humble. And I've, this is probably like the third time that I've had someone on here, and I've referred them expert, and, and they they would be like, "Oh, I'm not an expert," you know. Uh, and I say, "No, no, no, you you are an expert." But I guess oh, okay, I will officially stop using that word, um, and I will replace it with with like a super cool guy or 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 whatever. Uh, 
so so that's beautiful, Tim. Uh, okay, so in mobile marketing, or let's just say a real estate agent, uh, how would they systematically, step by step, start to roll out an action plan for themselves to try to get in front of seventeen thousand teenagers to have a phone, assuming that's the target audience of their customer? But how do you get in front of these eyeballs? Um, you know, just systematically, if you will, or begin to do that. Well, I think uh, I, th I think real estate agents um, they've they've lived a dichotomy that they they've already been mobile marketers without knowing it. I mean, the whole idea of having a sign in the yard in front of a a residence or a commercial property that's for sale um, that that right there is a mobile touch point. Um, the phone number itself is a mobile touch point. The inclusion of a URL becomes a mobile touch point. I mean, that right there is when someone drives by in their car, it's what they write down on a notepad or what they immediately pull their phone out and try to visit that site or call that number. So I'd say that's only half the dance, um, you know, ensuring that you're ready for that phone call um, and, and that you have a responsive website. And we can talk about that at greater length. But I think the other part of this is just understanding what kind of information are people looking for and and what is this sense of immediacy now um, I don't think people right now are going to they want to be in control and real estate professionals have to understand that they no longer can dictate when the open house is going to be I think that's one of the, the key things if if people are now untethered and what I mean by that is now that they are consuming the majority of email on a smartphone now that they are uh, executing or controlling so much of their business from a mobile device, whether that's a smartphone or a tablet they, they take everywhere with them. Now that they're doing that, I think more people are liberated to not have to say, we can meet you at lunchtime or we can meet you on the weekend. I think more and more people are liberated now to say, hey, we're going to go out and we're going to look at houses on our own time whenever we want to. <clears throat> and, I'll, and I'll draw a, a parallel real quick. You know, the automotive industry is dealing with this right now. Um, I've had automotive dealership clients who have told me that their, their post-7 p.m. video surveillance of the lot shows that they have people in the hundreds who will come to the lot after 7 p.m. And what's, what's amazing with that is... Uh, through some through some surveys that I've done with these guys, through a little bit of research, we found that people, as as much as you'd think it's because they want to come after work, um, in parallel, the thing that they that's driving them most to come after 7 p.m. is because the dealership's closed. They don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. And 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 the same thing's happening in 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 real estate right now. There are a number of resources that are third-party aggregators who will give you information on a school district, on crime rates, on utilities, on tax rates. And uh, I think when someone, wants to, when someone wants to know about a specific property, they want to know specific information about that property. Um, and I, I know we're going to get to hear a little bit later some of the mistakes that marketers are making today, and I'll and I'll offer some, I'll, I'll offer a little bit of insight universally, but specifically what the real estate world is probably doing uh, wrong or not so right right now. But it is that right there, which is saying if I'm in front of a house, and or I'm in a specific specific neighborhood, I expect that someone is going to provide to me all the information I need about that that neighborhood, about that part of town. Um, and I think, I think what, what real estate uh, marketers have, have done time and time again is they've left all of that information to think that that's going to be step three or four in the process. The person's going to already be a maven and know which neighborhoods they want to look in, what parts of town they want to look in. Then they'll call me. And then I'll talk to him about that specific house, and then I'll be armed with all this other information about the ecosystem or the community around that property. So, um, you know, to, to paint a very broad stroke there for you, I think that real estate agents and real estate agencies 
need to start to understand that their big opportunity right now is not to wait for Realtor.com or some other third-party aggregator to become the inherent Google, the front door for information about those areas where they represent properties for sale um, and obviously uh, buyers as well. So I think there's a um, I think there's much more to uh, what a what a shopper, what a what a buyer. Uh, there's much more to what they expect than uh, the the information or in worst cases the very broad listing information um, that real estate agents are, are providing to them now. All right. Uh, yeah. No. That that was a great uh, introduction, if you will. That to kind of clarify, you know, the, the mindset and the philosophy and kind of like really um, demystify or, or however you want to describe it, like the current state of affairs. Uh, and that's fine that you said that kind of like Zillow or maybe like they're kind of like the Google because that's if someone wants to go buy a house, that's what they do. They go to Zillow and then they, they contact the realtor because they need someone to, you know, unlock the door or, or what have you or just, you know, set up the showing. So, um Okay, so uh, you mentioned something about uh, having a responsive website. Would that be step one? If I'm a real estate real estate agent and if I want to find someone who's looking to buy or sell a house, that's that's step one is go out and get a responsive website. Or or, or what would you say would be step one? Well, a responsive and location aware site, um, a site that will know. Um, I I think your ability to use custom URLs on signage. In front of in, in front of a property, um, you know, take some of the work out of the process. Most real estate agents are using the same signage for each one of the properties they represent, and I believe that if you started to look at giving a specific, unique URL to each property, um, then you would know immediately when someone comes to that website you would know a, a couple of different things. If you're location aware, you would know whether or not they're sitting right out front. Um, and there are things that you could probably do with that website at that point to cue the real estate agent immediately to say, hey, there's someone there. Um, the other side of it is you're driving them to specific property information. And I think it's right there. It's not just having a responsive site. It's having property specific sites because probably the number one mistake that I see real estate agents making today or real estate agencies or firms making today is that they use just their home page, just their home URL, um, or just maybe the agent specific URL, um, sometimes an affinity URL that, that an agent has put together. And, and when they do that, they're driving people to the home page and they're treating them as if they're sitting on their couch shopping for homes and they're looking for a list. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, in terms of being ready for that behavior, but I think when it comes to a specific property and knowing that someone is inherently mobile, is out there looking um, experientially, they want to see the property, they want to see the street, they want to see the houses next door, um, when they're doing that, you have an opportunity to build a one-to-one -one engagement or one-to-one -one exchange of information and an experience in terms of the photos, the video, the other information we already discussed about the neighborhood, about the community, uh, specific to that property. Um, so it's more than just having a responsive side. Right. Okay. Uh, now, now that whole scenario, if you're a real estate agent, if you have a sign in front of the house, uh, that means you already have a client. You're, you're you're helping someone sell their house is basically what you're doing. What if what if you're a brand new agent? You don't have any listings. You don't have any signs in front of any properties anywhere. You just stepped out of the class, and you're just looking for a customer, just a buyer, a seller, somebody. Uh, what should you do at that point to try to do some like like what's mobile marketing 101 basically? Like when you have nothing and you're at ground zero, just looking for a client. Um, do you start putting out ads out there, you know, on, on mobile devices, or, or or what would you do if if you have no sign? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I'd, I'd say let's let's understand the inbound opportunity rather than you um, necessarily trying to go out and with a shotgun spray go generate leads. 
Um, I would tell the, the, the fresh grad from real estate school, what you need to do is uh, look at what Google AdWords can do to put advertising, to put search results right in front of people who are uh, within those areas of town that you want to specialize in. Um, I think that's, um, A, if you're not looking at that, I don't think anybody's going to graduate from real estate school and say, I, I know Austin. I think what they're going to say is, hey, I've got a passion and a knowledge about several parts of town, and I want to concentrate on several parts of town and people who are looking for homes. I want to be their agent. Uh, I want them to... I want them to retain me to go out and explore those parts of town. So I look at Google AdWords and all the different things you can do to hyper-target people based on their location, based on the devices they're using, and put different messages, different calls to action in front of those people once they find those search results, once they land on a, an advertisement, as, as it were. What's even bigger than that right now and more powerful than that is what Facebook is doing with Atlas. Now, this is, this is a move by Facebook to actually compete and have a significant advantage over Google. And what Atlas does is, just like everything that we've known about Facebook for about a year now, you can place ads directly in front of people if you have their email address, whether they like you or not on Facebook. So with that, with Facebook Atlas, what Facebook has done is said, we're ready for the omni-channel. We know that people are not just using Facebook on a tablet, on a phone, on a desktop or notebook computer. We also know that people are using a variety of different apps. We know people are visiting a variety of different sites for sports scores, for news, for recipes. We know people are everywhere. Atlas is an ad network now that spreads across all of these different assets beyond the four walls of Facebook and your ability now to get that hyper targeted message in front of someone especially if you have their email address to begin with um, so I would tell I would say you know 101 for for mobile marketing has nothing mobile at all to do with it it's probably going out and saying how can you build a content strategy that that identifies you, that brands you as an expert for a certain kind of house in a certain part of town, start there, very, very generic, and then start to tell a story. Blogs, video, how-to, uh, top ten restaurant lists, all these different things you can do and have people subscribe to that information with their email address. Um, once you have that and your friends and family and you've gone into LinkedIn or something else social network wise and you've exported email addresses that you may have with people you're connected to I think you can drop that I know you can drop that into Facebook using Facebook Atlas this new ad server that they that they basically have, have just launched and you can ensure that people no matter where they are at some point during the day they will see your message and again I think it's up to the individual real estate agent What's your call to action at that point? Is your call to action to have them call you? Is your action for them to answer four or five questions? Uh, how can you qualify that lead before um, they get in the car and they go to a neighborhood? How can you qualify the lead in, in, in that moment that they see an ad? And again, that's going to mean a responsive site. It's going to mean asking them the information, the bare minimum, I think, that that agent is going to need to call them back and have something that's very actionable. That's great, Tim. Uh, I love that. My, my, my heart was beating rapidly when you were speaking about that, and my eyes were open, like, like I said, a, a kid on Christmas morning. Like you, you're talking about all these new, uh, hot off the press Facebook ad type things, and you, you got it all intertwined nicely with uh, inbound you know, lead generation, capturing emails, and content strategies. I, th I thought that that was that was uh, beautifully done just now, uh, Tim. I mean, right there alone, we could probably stop the interview and say, "Okay, uh, <laughs> all right, everybody, if you're watching this, uh, take action on that right now." And um, yeah, I mean, the Facebook ad um, 
whatever you want to call it, um, Christmas gift, I guess, you, for people that are trying to, uh, you know, promote their products and services and real estate agents, I think that's probably going to be, that's going to be a, a game changer. You know, that that's good stuff. I guess um, mobile marketing, uh, a bit of a bit of a misconception. Then I think where you, where you kind of say, well, it doesn't really have so much to do with the phone. It's like, you know, it's it's all these other fundamental things that you have to have in place, and then it basically comes down to where you know if you if you're using this Facebook, this new ad platform, that the person has a responsive site and the customer can see it because the responsive uh, site it adjusts. So it's not all about the the phone per se, but all the stuff that goes on behind the curtain that you get in place, and then that's what kind of drives everything. Did, did, did I describe that accurately? Kind of, maybe, hopefully. Yeah, as accurately as you probably could. Yeah. Today. But uh, yeah, no, I think um, I, I think at the end of the day, you you said it perfectly. Those are words that usually come out of my mouth. It's not about the phone. It's about the person, and and anyone today is bouncing between different devices. They get an extra two or three minutes in the afternoon while they're sitting at their desk. What are they going to do? They're going to go probably look for a new car, a new home, uh, price their own home, you know, try to do whatever they can to start those, those first few steps of diligence in the process. Um, I think that's, that's, where, that's where all marketers, I don't care if you're selling homes, hamburgers, or t-shirts, you have to be in this situation where your audience now, the the prospective audience you'd like to acquire, if you don't know them, then you have to go out there and use some technology that will help you find them. And then the number two thing you have to do is you have to know as much as you can about them in the moment you have their attention. And I think that's absolutely lost on a lot of marketers right now. Most people are thinking about the click-through, the impression, the opt-in, and they're using those as, as success metrics. And, and those may be great leading baits to put in the water, but they still don't tell you much about who these people are. And I think that's the big missed opportunity the last mile is, are you qualifying people with the questions you ask them? Are you doing that in a way that will give you a unique advantage to provide them with a more valuable uh, solution or service in this situation with with buying real estate. If you can if you can come and provide something that's more personalized, more meaningful to them, rather than just knowing they met the criteria of a certain powder town and a certain budget, um, I think I think that's what's going to help a a real estate agent move the process along with probably a greater close rate or a, 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 a greater retention rate of, of clients that want to go out and use them to buy a house. Right. Uh, what would you say is the, the biggest challenge for um, a person that's trying to get up and running with uh, implementing the things that you just, that you just described? Uh, for, you know, say uh, a real estate agent, I guess maybe uh, the, one of the most common objections that I hear is, well, uh, I don't have enough time to, to do all of that. You know, um, you know that's great, but you know, kind of, I, I'm off. I got paperwork. I'm showing houses. I got a family. You know, I work another full time job. You know, uh, what it, is that the, the biggest rope, the biggest obstacle to all of this is just uh, uh, the biggest challenge is just time, or um, it, or is it a, a money thing, or what's the What's the biggest pitfall, kind of, with all of this beautiful stuff we're talking about? Well, I think it's uh, I think it's time. Uh, time is a big part of that because there's so much happening. There's so many possibilities out there. Um, do you do you have the time? Do you have the the bandwidth to actually go out and investigate, perform the diligence to determine what you need to invest in? I think that's part of it. Sure. I think there's a amount of there's a amount of fear that's there as well. I think. Um, especially real estate agents that have been in the industry for some amount of time um, uh, or have just switched careers and they have in their mind something defined, um, something they learned at real estate school, case studies they've read, which I'll be honest are going to be severely outdated. Um, it's, that's, that's the way it's, it is across academia right now. Um, but they're going to be 
they're going to be very surprised uh, if they go in complacent, if they go in super comfortable with the way they've done business or the way that they learned or heard this is done. So the the other the other thing that leads to is the thing I like to tell anybody, no matter the industry, is what mobility does is it allows you to shape behavior. It allows you to build your own cadence of uh, the, the rhythm and frequency through which you'll interface with your customers, you'll work with them, and or uh, I would say just work period. So it gets back to time, but it also gets into what do I want to have people do? And I think real estate agents, just like any other industry, they're going to have a long, hard road in front of them if they wait for somebody else to do it. If they wait for somebody else, the Joneses is what I like to say, keeping up with the Joneses. If they wait for the New York Times to publish an article and then act, uh, if, they've, if they like the way the Starbucks mobile app works and they want to emulate something there, that's not the way you go about doing that. Uh, you, you understand who your audience is and you understand where there may be opportunities to do something truly unique. So I think that's the, uh, that's the other important thing that everyone needs to understand is uh, that time which you do have to be diligent, you need to probably spread your time between seeing what other people in your industry have done and then what else is happening in other industries and then reconciling that with what you know about your present market. Um, what you know about them which will be as much what you've learned about them rather than what somebody told you about them, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that, you know, uh, mindset really is probably the backbone of, of a lot of uh, real estate related endeavors. I know that there's, I'm with Keller Williams, they're constantly always training about, you know, they have a whole training, it's called bold, be bold, you know, like, so they're always, yeah, so th no, that, that was, that was a, a key uh, thing that you kind of mentioned there. How, um, okay, so how, how could a person uh, set goals for themselves in uh, going in this new um, digital mobile marketing age that we live in now? Say, okay, all right, that was a great interview I watched with Tim Hayden. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set a goal right now. Now I want to accomplish X, Y, and Z. And then six months from now, I want to do A, B, and C. And then next year at this time, I am going to be one, two, three. Or does it work that way? Can you measure this stuff? Or I know you said a lot of people get caught up in conversions and click-through rates and stuff like that. But um, goal setting with all of this, uh, how would that fit into the equation? You know, I think it. Uh, I think at the at the at the primary level, it's going to be looking at the number of e how big is your email database. Um, how big do you want to grow your email database? Um, I think that's going to be part of because email is so integral. You have to have an email address to have a App Store account um, or a uh, uh, you know any of the any of the app marketplaces. You'll have to have an email address to do that. Most apps require you to have an email address. All of social media requires you to have an email address. Email is still the strongest currency we have in digital marketing today. And with that, I would say your first charge is building a database of people you want to market to and then figuring out what the best way is for you to augment that, build on that over time. So that's where you can get into some goal setting. What do we want to start with over the next 30 days? What do we want to have it look like in 60 and 90? In 120 days, all the way up to probably six months. I wouldn't plan any more than six months. Um, I would say that, and then I would say um, it's it's not bad to see. Uh, look at what your uh, look at what your traffic, and ultimately, if you're asking people questions, if you're surveying people or getting them to qualify something before they give you an address, before they tell you what their budget is and what parts of town they're interested. In. Um, as you see that, um, you know, see. I would say watch as time goes along. Both Facebook and Google will allow you to go in and edit those ads in the middle of a campaign. So try to understand what's working from a messaging standpoint. Try to understand um, what's what's converting 
what's not converting. And um, I would say those are great, great barometers. At the end of the day, there's only one number that counts for anybody, and that is how many customers paying non-tire kicking customers do I have? Right. Or, you know, or how many, uh, yeah, I guess how many, well, sometimes it's measured, you know, realtors can measure, you know, how many, uh, how many appointments, um, and, you know, and ultimately they reflect back and say, okay, so in the month of, month of October, I had five closings, you know, or I have two listings or, you know, and then sometimes for the year they measure it in like sales volume, uh, things of that nature. But um, all right, I guess it's like what we were saying earlier. It just kind of um, all, always circles back around to the fundamental stuff, building up, like you said, the, the email database, you know, and then uh, doing some of the strategies that you you described. And uh, I guess as far as where where it appears, it all it, it'll eventually just kind of work itself out. Whether it's a whether it's an iPad or a uh, like a Samsung Galaxy or an iPhone or or what have you, as long as you know you're kind of you've got a responsive website and you do all you do all the the basic stuff. Other things it just kind of falls into place. You're, well, you're, yeah, you're, and you're, I would say I, I, I let you're smirking a little bit. I must be way off the mark on that. Okay, uh, feel feel free to totally revamp what I just said. <laughs> no, but I think that's just it. It doesn't it doesn't matter the industry. Many people uh, they go after the shiny object. You know, they it used to be said that you know nobody gets fired for hiring IBM. Well, nobody's been fired for building a mobile app. Um, that doesn't mean everybody should go build a mobile app. Um, so if you start with the fundamentals, if you start with the fundamentals, and I would add to that, if you have parts of town where you know you you could be an agent. You don't have signs in somebody's front yard. Well, why don't you go put signs along the road where there's media that you can buy and then drive people to those same mobile experiences, to that same responsive site that's much more meaningful, much more personal. And, I, and, I, and I'm telling you right now, that's probably the one biggest aha with every digital marketer that I work with right now is understanding that mobile makes the outside world much more powerful, uh, much more direct in terms of how people would go to their phones, visit a website, take a picture, do whatever they're going to do. If you have compelling creative, a direct call to action, uh, I would I would also explore uh, outdoor media, uh, transit media, you know, bus shelters, uh, things like that, that people would either stop at a stoplight and be exposed to or pass as uh, on their regular commute. I think, uh, or while they're out looking at houses. I mean, I think it's it's getting ahead of things and and building a brand. And 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 I would and I would tell everybody, even the person, even the agent who has just walked out the doors of real estate school, you can get outdoor media and indoor media, uh, transit media, right now at pretty close to rock bottom prices, uh, because everyone has shifted so much of their ad spend over to digital. Uh, you'd be surprised. There's some very interesting um, stories that have been out recently about how Facebook and uh, several other tech brands have gone out with these full outdoor blitzes. They love billboards because it 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 promotes advertisement for an app, um, and there's a URL. They'll immediately visit that website and they'll download that app. Um, Hey, there's no reason to think why you can't capitalize on very similar behavior in real estate to have people visit a website or actually dial a phone number. Long story short, just not forgetting about offline and then marrying it with with online ultimately. Yeah, that's that that yeah, like you said, it, it is a good aha moment because maybe many people think that, you know, offline uh, advertising and, and media and like you said putting signs on buses or, or what have you it, maybe it's dead or just archaic or what have you uh, but but just marrying the two and driving people back to an app or uh, some particular URL or what have you yeah good stuff well these are all things that I would do if I were walking out of real estate school right now 
I would I would be looking at what I could do that was different than anybody else was doing. I would I would certainly leverage the incumbent successful programs, media systems, aggregators, um, real estate apps, real estate uh, third-party real estate marketplaces. Um, I would I would absolutely do that. I I would. But I would also start to look at how I could differentiate immediately. And I think you get pretty crafty. I think you. Uh, um, I don't want to go as far as calling it guerrilla marketing, but you could you could actually do something that no one else uh, in your market is doing or in your part of town is is doing if you if you look hard enough if you look if you look I would say straight enough to where you can intercept people get right in front of them and and knowing that they're going to have their phone with them everywhere they go uh, and get them to call you or visit your website before they actually get into the neighborhood before they actually start the process of looking for a home. I think that could be pretty powerful. Awesome. Speaking of uh, powerful stuff and websites, enough about us, Tim. How are you doing? Let's talk about your website. And uh, I believe you have a new book coming out. So I think this would be a good transition right into powerful stuff. Tell us about the new book. Sure. Uh, the name of the book is The Mobile Commerce Revolution, which I co-wrote with Tom Webster. Uh, Tom is the VP of Strategy at Edison Research up in Boston. Um, but, you know, I, we, we set out, Tom and I both, we have a passion for understanding why people do what they do. Um, and mobile commerce itself, um, the way that the funnel is shrinking, uh, the way that anyone can buy anything in the world that they want to buy, from wherever they're sitting right now. That is that is probably a 99% true statement. Um, it's not just Amazon. It's not just these recent developments with Apple Pay and PayPal. It is the fact that now we're carrying around all the information in the world in our pocket with, through that, that smartphone. Um, and about 70% of us in the United States are doing that today. As, as we're doing that, um, I would say the big opportunity right now for a brand is to reduce their operating expenses because they probably have too much friction, uh, too many steps in the process through how they sell what they're selling or how they serve what it is they're selling. I think they, they can look at opportunities to make processes much more seamless, uh, less friction, and then more efficient, costing less and then they can convert more people through mobile commerce. That's what the book is essentially about, and it offers some stern warnings about what happens if you don't start to explore uh, integrated systems, a lot of the, uh, the back-end piping with software as a service, with uh, customer relationship management or CRM platforms, and uh, marketing automation systems. Uh, all of these things will have to play along nicely with all the fancy apps, with all the fancy uh, offline connectivity we have now with our phones. Love it. Tim, uh, I think our work is done here. Uh, that, that, that was a very uh, insightful interview. I, I think the audience will be, will, will be tickled to watch that. I think you, you provided some, some really juicy, valuable golden nuggets in there. I can't wait to go back and watch this again and check out that new uh, Facebook advertising platform and, and kind of uh, you know, take copious notes on everything they just mentioned and, and really integrate it for myself. Um, this is this is amazing stuff. Talk about pulling back the curtain. Um, can't think of a better guy to have on than uh, Mr. Hayden. And love to have you back on sometime, Tim. And uh, any 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 final words of wisdom? That's just it. It's always always think strategy before technology. Always. Always, always understand what it is you're trying to do, not what your competitors do, not what your industry does, but what is it you need to do for your business before you spend one dollar on the technology you need to make it happen. Right. Okay, so here's my final words of wisdom, folks. Um, I'm going to say the opposite of that. I'm going to say go out and spend money and go buy Tim's book. Go to go uh, on Amazon, I believe it's on right now. Uh, you can or, get it or, and get it to no. Yeah. Okay. And Tim, your website, timhayden.com. Is that right? 
Well, that's that's one of my sites. That's a Tumblr blog I have. TTHstrategy.com is actually under construction, but that is that is my my consultancy's website. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. This was this was uh, an exhilarating interview. I loved every minute of it, and. Thank you very much for taking time on your busy schedule. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. You have a lot of clients, you know, books that you're writing and things of that nature. But um, thank you would be an understatement. I really appreciate all this this awesome uh, strategic advice and insight that you provided. Great stuff. Um, I'm sure I'm sure that your new book is going to be an absolute blockbuster if if it, if it isn't already you know crushing sales as we speak. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day, sir. Have a beautiful weekend. If I don't talk to you soon, Tim, have a nice uh, Thanksgiving and a, and a great holiday. Folks, you, you got too, it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, our work is cut out for us here. You know, go out, like I said, go out, get Tim's book, you know, digest all that information, put it into play for yourself, and, you know, watch, watch your business grow. You know, I mean, mobile's where it's at nowadays. Uh, like we said, not so much with the phone, so to speak, but that whole m mindset and, and, the, and the strategy around it and a lot of those fundamental concepts, you know, go make that happen. So see you on the next tutorial. Uh, just another amazing uh, module here at Lead Generation University. I'm forever indebted to Mr. Hayden. I don't know how I'm going to repay him. But see you on the next one, and uh, let me know how things work out for you with these strategies, you know. Uh, Love to hear your comments and your feedback and how all these great things are working out for you, all these beautiful strategies that Tim gave us today. All right, I'm going to stop rambling now. Take care. See you on the next episode. Thanks.